I liked it very much. It was interesting. It was talking about the fact that it was a TV movie in America, a bit theatrical over here. I mean, obviously, there, there are some precedents for that. I think The Life and Death of Peter Sellers was a TV premiere in America. That played at Cannes and then played here theatrically. And uh, Steven Soderbergh is, is quoted as having said, nobody would make it because uh, it was. they all said it was too gay. And this is after Brokeback Mountain, by the way, which is not as funny as this movie. And he's right, he highlights two things. Firstly, incredible that nobody would be interested. And secondly, he highlights just how funny it is because it is very funny. I mean, the interesting thing is, firstly, on a serious note, it is very, very open about its sexuality, which I think is excellent. Um, it, it, it's fun that the, his relationship, uh, the relationship between two central characters is the most normal thing in this extraordinarily you know, strange and weird world. And I think it's 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 really admirable that it's it's very frank. I mean, Michael Douglas said it in that thing. So the first time we kissed, there was a few titters in the audience. Beyond that, everybody just gets on with it. They go, that's that's the nature of the relationship and good for it. Um, there's a lovely moment at the beginning. You remember that thing in Austin Powers when uh, Austin Powers is brought forward into the future and he has to sit up one night watching television and he sees the moon landings and he sees the discovery of this extraordinary... Thing. And at the end of it, they say, what do you think? He says, Liberace was gay? Who knew? And there's a fantastic... <laughs> moment at the beginning of this film when Matt Damon is watching, in Matt Damon's character, Scott is watching Liberace, you know, play to this, this, this kind of very conservative audience and he says, to, to Barney, he says, I can't believe that this audience is buying something so gay. He says, they don't know he's gay. And that's really what the film's about. There's a central line in which Liberace says, they see what they want to see. And it reminded me of Beyond, remember that thing in Beyond the Sea, the Kevin, uh, Kevin, Kevin Spacey, Spacey movie? Yeah. It was a central line in that, which is people hear what they see. And it is about the way in which people, when, you, when you're doing a, a performance, you know, a spectacle, entertainment, people see what they want to see, they hear what they want, and so much of it is about that. You were talking about the idea of behind the candelabra, which is very interesting, that the candelabra hides nothing. It's hiding in plain sight. It's, you stand up in front of an audience dressed from head to foot in ermine and purple and diamonds and spangly things, and they don't see because they see what they want to see. That's a very interesting idea at the centre. There's also this kind of, there is a, a central idea about hypocrisy, that somehow they love it and they've embraced it, and yet they'd be shocked by the reality of it. And uh, there is that, of course, you know, Liberace himself famously sued a, a London newspaper and won, incidentally. And so there was this whole idea that, you know, we, know we, 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 we can take this lifestyle in a certain way, but we don't actually, we don't actually want to have to accept it and that's dealt with and there's one really interesting scene in which he talks about a, a deal that he's made with God in terms of the way in which he reconciles his own, own sexuality with his own religion so there are very serious themes of you know hypocrisy and of double thinking and of and seeing what you want to see but actually the primary experience of watching the film is it's a lot of fun. I mean, it is literally laugh out loud funny. Partly the cam the, the, the supporting roles, I mean, Debbie Reynolds is his mum. Rob Lowe is the plastic surgeon with his face pulled back so far, it looks like if he smiled too far, it's gonna snap off and whack the person behind him. I and mean, that's a, a brilliantly done performance. There's all the weirdness. There's this allegation that is put forward in it that somehow he wanted to get his boyfriend to have plastic surgery to look more like him in a younger life and whether this is true. I mean, it's it, all this strange, almost sort of science fiction weirdness going on. And yet at the heart of it, there is this kind of really sweet, sweet nature kind of domestic comedy about these two bickering Guys, I'm sorry. I'm, imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. Don't being, put us in the same. That being, no, I'm not. But same it, I'm not. But imagine that being entertaining. And, and the Scott other, Thompson. the other thing I'd say is, as far as the, um, you talked about about the end is concerned. The end sequence seemed to me to remind me of that sequence from Monty Python's Meaning of Life. It's Christmas in Heaven, and it's and which is obviously inspired to some extent anyway by the whole kind of Liberace ethos. So. It's an interesting film about hypocrisy. It's a very open and frank uh, film about sexuality. It has terrific performances from its leads, but it is fun. I mean, it is, it's, it's a fun piece. And when you said to him, do you think Liberace would have liked it? He would have thought it was fun. The other thing, as well as it being fun, and do include this on the YouTube version, uh, the other thing, thing, as well as it being fun, talking to, then? To, to the production team, because I'm just going adding a, a, an addendum, which may otherwise be cut off, is that it is also important to say that there is this this gothic element, this sort of Phantom of the Opera element to the whole thing, which is partly to do with Liberace and the wig. And I mean, you know, believe me, me more than most people know, you know, the importance of putting your hair on. But there's, there is a sequence in which the wig is taken off and we see Liberace as he is. And there is this idea that he is kind of, you know, there's the musician with the beautiful, you know, young ingenue who he sort of lures into his world. 
And there is a sense that the drama closes in around them. When you first see the Scott Thorson character, he's outdoors, he's animal training, he's working on a movie because he's an animal trainer. And, uh, and then once he gets sucked into Liberace's world, it's almost as if the outdoors ceases to exist. And one of the complaints he has, he said, we never go out. We never go out. And you think, yeah, and the funny thing is when you're watching the movie, you never go out. The, the movie begins, and this obviously would have been designed on purpose by Soderbergh, but it begins as a you know as an outdoor vista you can breathe the air and as the movie progresses he goes into this world which is plastic and enclosed and hermetically sealed and almost kind of vacuum sealed and it is a strange thing and, and in the middle of it is this guy so amidst all the fun and amidst all and there is and the kitsch fun is i mean i watch most of it with a smile on my face but there is this sort of gothic sad lurking strange you know cre creepy sense of there is there is a gothic story within there as well